Good, it's Friday. Let's hit this workout today, guys. 11.45, it's uh, our virtual class. Um, come join us. If you haven't um, been consistent lately, just because it's Friday, don't wait till Monday. Start today, guys. Hopefully you had a good candidate week. It's a good time to start. Let's build that new routine where it includes some more fitness and gets you um, getting rid of some of that soreness um, as we're preparing to open. So you can't use this the next coming days, weeks, um, as your transition to get ready to get those workouts with us very soon. I'm gonna pass it over to Yash for the workout, guys. Um, and yeah, Yash, take it away. All right, guys. So for the workout today, uh, buy in two minute pole holds. We're gonna get that core fired up there. Uh, two minutes is kind of getting into that range where you're, you're gonna get into that burnout range. So if you can go two minutes, great, try and do it. Um, maybe break it up into a minute uh, each time, but try to get to that point where it's really kind of burning that core, but you're still maintaining that position. From there, we're gonna go into five rounds. So it's a lot of stop and go in this one. Uh, it's a lot of transitions. You want a 100 meter run, so you're going nice and fast out the gates, and then coming back in, going for that alternating jumping lunge. Step back out to that run, come back in, work on a strength piece. We're gonna go alternating renegade rows with a dumbbell and kettlebell. Then 100 meter run, and then finish off with Superman arch raises. So stop and go each time there, guys. Keeping that heart rate up for the run, and then coming back in for a strength component. Five rounds of that, guys. Let's see if we can aim between that 15 minute and 20 minute mark. Um, depends on how comfortable you are with that uh, renegade row. So if you go a little bit heavier on that, it's going to be a little bit more taxing on it. Also, with that two minute hull hold at the beginning, if you're still kind of getting into that hull hold, so learning it, it might take a little bit longer, but that's okay. Um, try to see if you can get those positions down. For you that, for you guys that feel comfortable with that hull hold might be a little bit of a shorter workout based on how you break it up. Uh, but of that guys, I'm gonna pass it over to Eddie for the afterburner. Afterburner, um, some accessory work guys. After you've really woken up those upper back movement uh, muscles, um, this is a good accessory movement to get that awareness um, in your shoulder to control that overhead position in your squat. But to make sure that that overhead position is in a very a proper position of the shoulder girdle. Those scap rotators will be key and will guide and position your shoulder in a better position for that overhead position. We'll see more of that in the next segment of uh, the afterburner and more um, in our walk and uh, in our workout. Okay, so we'll see you next. Okay, let's get ready to warm up here. Today's warm up is AMRAP 6. So we're moving for six minutes. Okay, so it's not about doing one round, two rounds, three rounds. You move at the pace that you consider is a warm up that gets your heart rate going, going uh, elevated, that gets the muscles fired up in the movements that we're, we're trying to get your hamstrings, your glutes, and your upper back muscles like your lats, your rhomboids. Focus on the area versus focusing on the speed or the rounds that you're doing today. Okay, get warmed up. So first movement, one for 30 to runners, 60 singles. So if you don't have a skipping rope, um, go into those hops. So hop, single tap, hop, single tap, or maybe it's a double tap. So hop, double tap, hop, double tap. Repeat that, guys. For the 30, for double unders would be the, the, the uh, 30 hops with a uh, double tap. Okay, so that'd be equivalent. When you're done that, from there you want five per side of your single arm row. So find an object, be a band, can be a weight, kettlebell here in this case, guys. You're gonna lean forward. If you find it a little awkward, you don't have another object on the other hand, feel free to follow along. If your stance is a little bit off, feel free to go into that split lunge. Okay, whatever feels comfortable. But the intention here is, again, squeeze your shoulder blade together, Hold your shoulder blade back. Start pulling that object by pushing and flexing your elbow, so pushing your elbow to the ceiling without shrugging forward. Okay, so shoulder blade back, flex your elbow, squeeze your armpit uh, right between your arm and your rib guys. Keep that muscle nice and active. Extend that arm, retract, throw, and go for five before you switch sides. After that, then you're going for five as well on both sides, 
your Bulgarian squat to find the object that you can step back onto that is elevated. I'm choosing a smaller object because I know some of you guys may not have a taller object, but if possible, maybe it's the couch, maybe it's a chair. Um, picking a higher object to allow you to get into your hip flexor a little bit better. Lower object, you just need to get longer. Okay? From there, you're gonna go down, think about the go straight to the floor. Okay? Squeeze your butt to get that quad stretched out. Then drive through your he uh, heel to activate your hamstrings. At all times, you guys think about keeping your glutes nice and active so your pelvis is in a neutral position versus in this tilted position. So glute tight, core tight as you're doing your Bulgarian squat, going for, again, five on both sides where you're trying to really fire up hamstrings and your glutes while keeping that core and hips in control, okay? And go for six minutes, get warmed up. Hopefully that gets the heart rate going for you. Let's get ready for this warm up, our workout, sorry guys, hopefully you are warmed up after that warm up. Um, the buy-in today, as Yash mentioned, is a two minute hollow body hold. Now, hollow body, Trying to create your, your body was in that banana shape, guys, that kind of curved back uh, position where that lumbar, your low back, is on the ground. It can be tricky to, what I see, we see all the time is the low back comes up, you gaze the abs a little bit too much. So try to round your back. If that means you're grabbing your thighs or starting in a dead, dead butt position, whether it's legs up or knees bent, that's up to you. Bring your chest up like you've done a crunch. Okay, so a little crunch here. You can use a lot of arms or a little bit of arms. As you start feeling comfortable with that, you can start challenging yourself uh, to lower your heel. You can hold this position, accumulating two minutes of your hollow body hold, okay? If you gotta take breaks, take breaks, but you're accumulating two minutes in that position, which is gonna fire up that core, um, and that's your buy-in today. Once you've done your hollow body position, now, you're gonna go out for a run, for a 100 meter run. It's not just a jog. Think about that's where you wanna elevate your heart rate. So we're gonna sprint out the door, we're gonna sprint out to the 100 meter mark, guys. After you've completed 100 meters, then you're going into 15 alternating jumping lunges. Now, for progression for your jumping lunges, start by a more controlled movement by lunging, by backwards or forwards. So, gain your balance, back knee, to the floor to allow you to keep that chin in control versus having your knee over your toes. So chin in control by being perpendicular to the floor, then going up, switching sides, loosely again just a more controlled regular lunge. If you're ready to progress from there, what you can do is jump into your split position. So split position, slide down, come up, split position, Go down, come up, work. and now it becomes a more dynamic movement and you're not necessarily doing a full jumping lunge to control that knee position to not um, hurt those knees. If that is feeling comfortable, you're ready to do more, go right into a jumping lunge where you have to start controlling your descent as you're jumping into it. Going for 15 jumping and alternating lunges. When you're done, out for a sprint, you go again for another 100 meter um, sprint. That one's gonna be a little bit trickier. Legs are gonna feel a little heavier after those lunges. Once you come back, you're then going for 12 alternating renegade rows. So you're gonna need an object, whether it be a plate, I'm using a dumbbell. Dumbbell is definitely a little bit more um, comfortable, more natural. So you're gonna get into your push-up position. You're gonna roll this up, back down. I like corkscrewing my hand, so I twist. Notice my elbow, I bring it to the front shift my weight into that hand, row, again, turn my palm into the floor, grab that object, row. You go for 12 alternating renegade row where you push into the floor, stabilize, keep that core tight so you're not twisting your body, guys. Then row that dumbbell or object up towards your stomach. When you're done the 12, you're back out for a run, 100 meter sprint, then you're gonna finish off your round, nine Superman, so those arch raises. Arch raises are gonna be on the floor. We 
We started with the hollow body position. Now we're doing the same shape, but on our stomachs. Okay, so hands to the opposite side. Think about lifting your chest, squeeze your bum, and flex your hamstring. Avoid bending your knees. So push your heels to the ceiling as you squeeze your bum. Back down, again, squeeze your whole posterior. Back down for nine total. You can go arms overhead as well. Find a position that you're comfortable with. When you've done those nines, now you've done that one round, now you're gonna repeat it for five rounds total. Okay, starting with that sprint um, on round number two. Okay, hollow body is just done once, guys. Have fun with this workout. Um, this is a fun one for sure. It keeps you moving today, guys. Enjoy this workout. All right, guys, we're here for the afterburner. Doing three rounds of 10 and 10 scap rotators, and then we're going into a 30 second overhead squat hold. So we've done overhead squat holds before. Um, with this one, we're gonna add a little bit more activation and emphasis on that scap and its positioning. So with those scap rotators, uh, I'm gonna use a plate, but you guys can use virtually any weight that you have at home that you feel comfortable um, holding on to, so not too super like too heavy. Um, for the scap rotator here, I'm gonna start off by getting that inside point of my elbow tucked into my side. Um, a good cue also would be to possibly put like a cloth or something in between, like a sponge in between there to make sure that your elbow doesn't uh, veer off to the side, it stays nice and close to your uh, side there. From there, with your weight guys, you're gonna pull that, you're gonna start with your uh, weight in the middle, so about your belly button, then I want you to rotate that weight out as much as you can or to the side. You might feel a little bit of a stretch in the back of the shoulder there. Um, most of the key points here is we want to feel it on that shoulder blade. So that upper back here, not in the traps, but a little bit lower region there and in that mid back as we're twisting that object out. Make sure when you guys do that twist, we're not Letting that shoulder kind of roll forward. Want to keep that shoulder down and really isolate that scap muscle on its own when we're doing those rotations. Ten per side, guys. Um, if you have bands, you can also do the same thing with a band. Uh, good resistance there is another way of doing it. Ten and ten per side. Once you're done, we're gonna take that and apply it to our overhead squat. So grab PVC, grab something nice and light. Uh, Preferably, you can use like a broomstick, try and keep the object nice and straight. Once we're up here in this overhead position, so first make sure you're comfortable doing that pass through all the way through. A little bit sticky, but you can still keep those elbows locked out. From there, get that PVC or broomstick directly over top of your shoulder. So I'm in this overhead uh, position here. I want to keep it directly over top of the shoulders, not in front, all the way back here. Right that middle portion, the base of my neck there. From there, I'm gonna think about squeezing my shoulder blades together, kind of like when I was doing that rotation. So I'm gonna squeeze them together, keep that tension, and then slowly overhead squat while maintaining that tension in my upper back. If you can only go to this position, stay there, hold it for 15 seconds, for two, sec two sets there, then come back up to another set of that 15 seconds to get 30 seconds or you can do all 30 seconds at once. Um, if you find that it's difficult to do that overhead squat, you can also go for that overhead lunge and just come down to the bottom of the overhead lunge and hold that position. So we're keeping the legs active still here and still keeping the overhead position active. So in case you guys can't do that squat, you can also do an overhead lunge position. Most important thing is just make sure you're really trying to squeeze those shoulder blades in towards each other at the top to keep that bar secure overhead. Hope you guys enjoy the three rounds there. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the next one.